This morning, on behalf of the uh, Standing Committee on Citizenship and Immigration, I presented a report uh, which is entitled New Tools for the 21st Century, the Global Compact for Safe, Orderly and Regular Migration, and the Global Compact for Refugees, an Interim Report. This report comes as part of a larger study. Uh, for the last uh, couple of months, our committee has been studying immigration and migration in the 21st century what are particular challenges Canada is facing, as well as opportunities that Canada should embrace. As part of that study, we traveled to Uganda and Tanzania. We have been hearing from expert witnesses. Partway through the study, uh, Michelle Rempel, Conservative MP, uh, suggested and then made a motion that the committee study the compact uh, for, on global migration, as well as the compact on refugees. Uh, she requested two meetings be held on that subject. We actually had four, we changed the uh, motion to uh, do four meetings. In the process of that, we heard from 18 witnesses. We received 14 written briefs. Every single witness and every written brief uh, expressed unanimity in the fact that Canada should participate in both the Global Compact on Migration as well as the Global Compact for Refugees. We were able to hear from international NGOs, from Canadian NGOs, from academics, from officials, uh, from people who have been participating both from the uh, IOM as well as UNHCR on the two uh, compacts about the non-binding nature of these compacts. These two compacts are both non-binding, they do not impact in any way on the sovereignty of uh, any state that participates in them, but however are aspirational and inspirational. These two compacts express a desire to understand the collaborative nature and the necessity of collaboration among states to help those people who are on the move. Right now, our world has 258 million people on the move. That includes about 190 million immigrants, um, 40 million internally displaced persons, as well as over 25 million convention refugees and over 3 million asylum seekers. The world is on the move, and these global compacts express uh, an ability for countries to want to gather together, to share best practices, and to ensure that we have cooperation and collaboration in our migration processes. We heard regularly that, generally speaking, Canada already meets all of the 23 objectives of the Global Compact on Migration. However, Canada's fingerprints are all over both of these uh, documents. One was uh, really authored by Louise Arbour, former Justice of the Supreme Court of Canada on uh, the Global Compact on Migration. Uh, we were also instrumental in ensuring that the Global Compact on Refugees has a Canadian imprint. We are looking at the most vulnerable people in the world and ensuring that we have a way to both share burdens among uh, countries that receive uh, the, the lion's share of refugees and those countries who have resources to help. We are being able to express our, our agenda around women and girls and gender justice as well as safe, orderly and regular migration. Uh, we are disturbed and I think disappointed that the Conservative Party has taken an opposite approach on this. All the evidence that was presented at the committee, every single uh, witness that we heard from uh, suggested that it was not only appropriate but necessary for Canada to sign, to, to be participants in these uh, documents. I would say that in their own uh, dissenting report, they continue to misrepresent the documents. There is no document to sign. They continually say that. These are aspirational. They are collaborative and they are meant to engage. So Canada uh, should be a party to them. Canada, our committee has decided in its majority voice to encourage Canada to sign and to, to, to engage and to also make sure that Canada uh, participates in the fora which will emanate from these two uh, compacts. The first compact will be available uh, on Monday in Marrakesh. It will be um, the object of voting and we've encouraged the Government of Canada to vote to participate in the compact. In mid-December 
we'll have a, a vote at the UN to look at the global compact uh, for refugees. Again, we are encouraging our government to vote to do that. Um, we are encouraged that the government has stated that that is their intent, as it should be, because that's what Canadians strongly have expressed. There are obviously uh, reasons that the, uh, the Conservatives have decided to, to make this an issue. We think that it's absolutely important to make it an issue, but a positive issue. Uh, this is Canada's way of expressing its uh, uh, values, its ideals, and its concerns to the world community and to participate in it in that way. And I'm available for questions. So why do you think the Conservatives are opposing this? I mean, you heard the Prime Minister stand up in the House say that he's accusing them of using rebel media talking points. What do you think? Um, as, as I've watched, I mean, it was, it was interesting that the, uh, the Conservatives suggested we do the study. Uh, they had a motion to do two meetings. We had four meetings. We heard from witnesses. Um, and despite the fact that all the evidence came in uh, in favor of Canada collaborating in this way, they have chosen to go another way. They didn't hear the evidence they wanted. All one can suggest is that there is a division in the Conservative Party. It's obvious. Mr. Bernier has left their party. He has extreme right-wing views. He is extremely anti-immigration. And instead of challenging him, instead of taking him on and saying this is not the nature of the Conservative Party, not listening to people like a former minister, Chris Alexander, they have decided to cozy up to him and attempt to pull his supporters into their party. And I think it's a big mistake. I think they are misunderstanding Canada's generosity, Canada's commitment to inclusion, Canada's welcoming, Canada's need for, uh, for an immigrant population to build our workforce. I think they are, are playing politics. I think it's an internal problem. I think that there is a small uh, uh, number of Canadians who would agree with them, and I think they are making a major political mistake at this time. I was reading, uh, Mr. Iverson, this morning, you said, you were saying, okay, you say it's an aspirational document, but we've seen it with the Aboriginal Declaration of Human Rights, that it started as an aspirational pro uh, document, but then it came to be integrated within the law in Canada. So, therefore, what he's saying is that the same thing could happen with this document. Yes, that will be Canadians' choice. Um, Canada has, has absolutely the right. We have fair and free uh, democratic elections. We will elect the governments that Canadians want. And governments will look at these aspirational documents and decide whether or not Canada wants to change any laws. We actually asked officials whether or not any laws or programs would need to be changed to match the 23 objectives. And we were told no. Um, the, the, the reality is, I think that there is more Canada can do, but that will be uh, part of a sovereign country's decision on what they want to do, what we want to do. And Canadians will speak. Canadians may say that the, uh, uh, the rights of Indigenous people are part of the fabric of Canada, and then we will change things to make that so. But that will be our choice. There's some material in the Global Compact that suggests that we re-education and there's mention of public funding for media as well. Um, what's your government's position on the lives for, for media? Again, I think present company included. Uh, Canadian media are fact-based, are evidence-based, are neutral, and are independent. That is the nature of Canadian media. It's not the nature of media in every country. And uh, what this compact does is suggest that the kind of standards we have for Canadian media are the kind of standards that would promote good, orderly migration. That is, is, is what we're talking about. There is absolutely no impact on Canadian media with respect to this document. Uh, so the CBC won't see funding hold if they don't meet through standards? Uh, the, the CBC uh, is, is, is a broadcaster that we respect. The CBC is publicly funded and, uh, the, and Canadians want both private and public media to, to be successful. We are developing, obviously, funds to make sure that, that all of our media has the resources uh, to do the job you want to do. We're actually, I think, a government, and I don't speak for the government, this is a parliamentary committee, but stepping out of that for a moment, I think we're a government that wants a media that criticizes, wants a media that tests. 
wants a media that pushes, but we want it to do it in a resource way that has absolute uh, evidence-based, fact-checked uh, editorial content. And that's what we have in Canada right now, with a couple of little exceptions. What will be the domestic impact of signing this contract? Uh, again, uh, we won't be signing, we'll be collaborating, we'll be, uh, we'll be agreeing to it. There's no treaty, Louise Arbour has been very clear, there's no document to sign. But by participating in it, I think the biggest impact is we'll be able to share our best practices. So we have two sets of best practices. On the immigration side, we have a, uh, a process of coming to Canada for immigrants that is gold standard. And we're going to share that with other countries. We have uh, workers that come into this country, economic migrants, students, uh, temporary residents. All of that system of immigration is gold standard, no changes. With respect to refugees, we have government assisted, we have visa referred, and we have community sponsored refugees. Again, that community sponsored refugee program is being looked at by countries around the world. And what the what the framework does, the Global Compact does, is it encourages other countries to look at the Canadian system and absolutely find a way that they can, in their own way, I mean, you're not going to have the same system in any two countries. We all have different ideas. We can learn from other countries as well. I, I was in, uh, our committee was in Uganda this year, and in Uganda, they're one of the pilot projects for the Comprehensive Refugee Response Framework. It is fascinating what they are doing. They don't have camps, they have settlements. They um, engage uh, refugees who come across their borders immediately, give them work permits, give them the right to travel, find a way to work with them, and find uh, their economic advantage in Uganda. So there are, there are things that by participating with the vast number of countries who are gonna, sign, who are gonna participate into these um, uh, agreements, we're going to find a way to learn things, but I think we're also going to find a way to teach things. What's your response to critics who say that the UN, these kinds of agreements are useless because they're not binding? I, I think that uh, they are as effective as we want them to be. So every time, I mean, the UN Convention of 1951 on Refugees and the 1967 Protocol that built on it is absolutely effective. It's an example of something that works. Can it be improved? Obviously. Uh, these sorts of documents lift us up. They, they pull us into thinking about issues that are important and, and recognizing that, well, sometimes I, I, I look at our immigration system in Canada and it's kind of like our family cottage. It was built in four generations, it has five doors, and sometimes it drives people crazy because it doesn't work. Our immigration system itself is built in the 20th century. So what our committee is doing is looking at our immigration system. We will come up with a report in February saying, where can we adapt the system to the 21st century? Things are different. We're not pretending it's the same. What I am respected about the government and the response to the reports that we write is they look at it. So whether we look at medical and admissibility, whether we look at Yazidi women and girls, uh, that's the kind of work our committee does. The government considers the report, they make appropriate changes, and we keep moving. That's the, the iterative nature of the way Parliament works, all my colleagues here, and government responds. That's what I'm hoping. Uh, so I, I hope that you have as much interest in our, in our global migration study uh, in a couple of months, because I think it's going to be a thick, omnibus kind of study that is going to look at our whole system of immigration and refugees. We're going to commend the government on the things we're doing really well and look at ways that we could improve our system. We've got you here still, so I'll ask a question. In the study, did you have any indication of where the U.S. will land on this? They don't like to sign this kind of view on agreements. When, in, in June, when uh, this agreement was uh, first looked at, um, over 170 countries voted for it. One country voted against it. That was the United States. The United States tends to not want to sign anything. They tend to, to lie outside of, of the world community. That's, that, that's what they, they, they choose to do. I respect that. Canada, however, I think is the kind of multilateral partner, the kind of 
internationalist country that will want to be a part of something. But isn't that important, right? Well, your government pushed the United States to sign that agreement. We're seeing tens of thousands of people cross from the United States illegally into Canada and claim asylum here. What's our largest border? So that being said, don't you think it's important to push the United States on this? I don't think we push the United States on anything like that. I think, as uh, Minister Blair has said, that the uh, uh, things like the safe third country are open for discussion. We engage regularly with our largest trading partner, our largest um, cultural partner. We have the longest undefended border in the world. Uh, we have generally good relationships with the United States on migration. We can certainly work with them, um, whether they sign, whether they agree to the uh, document or not. Thank you. Wait.